I, on behalf of National Institute of Disaster Management, welcome everyone on today's international webinar on snow and avalanche risk management jointly organized by National Institute of Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, and Snow and Avalanche Study Establishment, Ministry of Defense, uh, in collaboration with Swiss Academy Agency for Development and Cooperation. The number and severity of natural disaster is rising as the climate undergoes changes and as the world population continues to increase. This trend is made worse by the populations clustering in vulnerable areas by the degradation of the environment and by the expansion of areas at risk due to climate change. The impact of global warming are felt especially in mountainous regions where the rise in temperature is above average, affecting both glacierized landscape and water resources. The consequences of these changes are manifold and varied from retreating glaciers to an increasing in the frequency and intensity of snow avalanches that can severely affect the socio-economic development and the destruction of traffic infrastructure and building. This international webinar is directed towards sensitizing and promoting exchange of knowledge, experience, expertise, and innovations on snow and avalanche risk management for effective collaborative action implementing the Prime Minister 10-point agenda and Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction for reducing the risk and enhancing the resilience among all the stockholders. To enlighten us in more detail in this topic today of today's webinar, that is snow and avalanches risk management, we have with us now our chief guest, Lieutenant General Sayyid Atta Hasnan, is member National Disaster Management Authority, is the recipient of Palam Vises Seva Medal, Uttam Youth Seva Medal, Ati Vises Seva Medal, Sena Medal, and Vises Seva Medal Bar. And also we are joined by our distinguished dignitaries, Sri Naresh Kumar, outstanding scientist and director, Snow and Avalanche Study Establishment, Ms. Corinne Dimanche, Head of Cooperation, Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, Vishesh Seva Medal, Executive Director, National Institute of Disaster Management, Dr. Sudhansu Sekhar, Snow and Avalanche Study Establishment, Dr. Perry Bartelt, and Dr. Balhar, Swiss Academy for Development and Cooperation. And we also have our Professor Surya Prakash, Head, GMR Division, National Institute of Disaster Management. Now, to begin our inaugural session, I would like to call upon our Executive Director, National Institute of Disaster Management, Mono Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, BSM, for his keynote address. Uh, Major General uh, Manoj Kumar Bindal, during his more than three decades of service to government of India, he has held some important command and staff assignments, such as Deputy Director General in Directorate of Army Air Defense, Director of Center for United Nations Peacekeeping, Secretary of the International Association of Peacekeeping Training Centers. With these words, I would like to pass on the stage to Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, ED and IDM, for his inaugural address. Over to you. Oh, Dr. Sivar Prakash. Uh... First of all, hearty welcome to all the participants who have joined. And uh, right now it is already touching 600. And a very warm welcome to all the panelists. And a special welcome to Lieutenant General Atta Hasnan, a uh, member in DMA, for joining, uh, gracing this particular webinar and showing the commitment of the government towards this important issue. I also welcome uh, Swiss uh, Development uh, Agency for Development and Cooperation, SDC Switzerland, for collaborating with NIDM and uh, SASE, uh, Snow and Avalanche Study Establishment of DRDO uh, for coming uh, together with NIDM on holding this important issue because snow and avalanche is what we are going to uh, face in coming months. And hence, it is the right time to start uh, sensitizing and preparing for the same. Uh, with this, uh, 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 I will uh, just talk about the subject a little bit. Uh, because we are aware that we have had to face the impact of natural hazards from time immemorial. Natural hazards such as earthquakes, landslides, avalanches, floods, cyclones, droughts, and volcanic eruptions of varying magnitudes 
have repeatedly been the cause of calamities. According to some statistics, natural hazards are believed to account for up to 4% of the total annual deaths worldwide, besides causing enormous economic losses and uprooting of habitation. Snow avalanche is a common occurrence in snow covered mountains, uh, in the, uh, which is a slide of snow mount, uh, down a mountain side. And it is a rapid downslope movement of a large detached mass of snow, ice, and associated debris such as rocks and vegetation. So small avalanches or slabs occur in large numbers, while large avalanches that may encompass slopes a kilometer or more in length with millions of tons of snow occur infrequently cause most of the damage. Humans have been exposed to the threat of sliding snow for as long as they have inhabited the mountainous region. A large avalanche can run for many kilometers and result in massive destruction of forest and anything else that comes in its way. These uh, threats have been felt in the Indian context, context as well. Most recently, snowfall of, of up to two meters occurred at many places on high reaches of Pir Panjal range between 16 to 20 February 2005, uh, where we had resulting in large number of deaths, uh, good about 300 uh, deaths. So uh, there is, uh, 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 the whole Himalayan region is well known for occurrence of snow avalanches, particularly the western Himalayan regions, that is the snowy regions of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, and Uttarakhand. No doubt that these hazards, they deserve much better attention in terms of multi-hazard mapping, research, scientific investigations, and effective mitigation and management practices. So the objective with regard to snow avalanches should be to generate awareness of the various aspects of the landslide hazard in India and to suggest suitable action to reduce both the risks and costs associated with this hazard. Accordingly, the aim should be to envision an improved administrative response, which brings together the relevant scientific, engineering, construction, planning, and policy capabilities of the nation to eliminate losses from snow avalanches and other ground failure hazards. So the long-term mission is to develop a strategy that encourages the use of scientific information, maps, methodology, and guidance for emergency management, land use planning, development, and implementation of public and private policy to reduce losses from landslide and other ground failure hazards. It is important to define the role of local, state, and national level bodies in combating this hazard. Large number of guidelines have been put on this issue uh, and uh, which are being followed. Today, we are going to discuss some of these uh, policies, intervention that is required, some of these actions that are required to be taken and through experts as to what they are doing in their respective departments. And through this combined collaborative uh, learning, will be able to drive home some relevant traditions for the participants. I'll expect the participants to be very attentive and ask as many questions as possible through the chat box uh, so that the speakers get a chance to reply. And should the time run out if due to some reason, uh, then uh, the replies will be given to them on uh, mail or will be put up on an IPM website. With this, I once again welcome all the panelists and the participants to this webinar, international webinar on snow and avalanche risk management. And uh, thank you so much. Over to you, Dr. Uh, uh, Raju Thank you for your address and underlining the need to focus on promotion of efficient, safe, and resilient environment for emergency and disaster situation, better linkage, coordination, and cooperation among stockholders, and long term plan. Now, our opening remarks. I would like to pass on the platform to Sri Naresh Kumar, outstanding scientist and director, Snow and Avalanche Studies Establishment, DRDO. Prior to his appointment as director of SASE, he has served as associate director of research and development establishment in Pune. He has awarded prestigious DRDO Scientist of the Year Award in 2014 for outstanding contribution in design and development of military bridge system. He is a recipient of Lev Scientist of the Year in 2009 and Technology Group Award in 2013. He also received Corp 
of engineering award by institution of engineers in 1993 for his paper on planning design and control of avalanches for the protection of for the protection of sri padrinath sri over to you sir yes sir you are audible and yeah, visible yeah yeah good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, slight uh, hiccup in my terminal so i have come moved to another terminal where dr sudansu is uh, talking so uh, kindly bear with me for this delay uh, at the outset let me uh, compliment nidm for this uh, wonderful initiative where they are uh, organizing a series of uh, webinars on various uh, natural hazards and it's so important for people and all those who are involved in uh, disaster management and drr uh, to know about the risk which are involved in uh, various natural hazards and prepare against the uh, hazard uh, prepare the people and uh, take appropriate action when the event occurs uh, with the increasing activity as you are all aware in india in all northern himalaya and the eastern himalaya uh, the complete area is snow bound uh, and there is a lot of avalanche activity and now in last decade or so and uh, currently a lot of activity is increasing in these areas and so is the avalanche danger and uh, therefore uh, we need to really work uh, uh, very concertedly on this area uh, so that the uh, casualties and the uh, loss to property etc can be reduced and brought to almost zero uh, sase uh, snow and avalanche study establishment the drdo lab uh, based in chandigarh and manali has been working in this uh, area of snow and avalanches for last almost 50 51 years and during this period we have developed number of tools and techniques to mitigate avalanche hazard uh, through various means like the first is uh, mapping of the area and then uh, zoning of uh, avalanche hazard avalanche movement then we go for uh, controlled release of avalanches we uh, do avalanche forecast we do uh, avalanche control through structures when it becomes necessary and the most important of all is the uh, training to various uh, users that we impart on a regular basis so our users in army users in state government the qrts of various state governments and all these steps basically we are uh, working on development of technologies so that uh, we can uh, uh, mitigate this hazard to the extent possible uh, uh, we are also very uh, we are also nominated as the nodal agency for uh, uh, avalanche hazard mitigation sase appears in the ndma act as the nodal agency for mitigating for all the management of avalanche hazard related things and i am uh, we are also uh, very closely working with our friends in uh, swiss institute of snow and avalanche research uh, uh, and similar other institutes like qual usc etc i am very happy uh, that uh, some of the speakers from uh, dr parry and uh, others are going to talk they are participating in the seminar they are going to talk uh, and i will be very happy to listen to their views on this in fact this institute has uh, done a wo- uh, excellent uh, wonderful service to this avalanche hazard and mitigation we also we use you know we have own models as well as we follow the uh, various models on avalanche dynamics or uh, uh, avalanche control guidelines etc we still follow them uh, whatever the uh, the work done by them is being followed and i'll be very happy to listen to dr parry and his uh, other colleagues uh, in spite of you know what uh, whatever work we done in last uh, 50 years and i consider uh, excellent work has been done by sas in last uh, 50 51 years uh, avalanche accidents do happen every year and uh, uh, there are uh, loss of life uh, property every year largely uh, because uh, uh, people are unaware people uh, the mitigation measures adequate mitigation measures have not been taken so avalanches do cause casualties and it is possible i'll cover that in uh, next few minutes uh, that by various uh, mitigation techniques and tools it's possible to bring down these casualties and loss to property to a very uh, lower level to almost zero another loss that happens uh, not because of the avalanche but because of the snow load because uh, in mountain areas the snow uh, imposes uh, heavy loads on the roofs of the buildings and if the buildings have not been designed specifically for uh, uh snow load uh, then they also collapse so i'll uh, discuss that little later 
uh, Sase is not covering the entire Indian Himalayas, varying, uh, ranging from uh, Western Kashmir to uh, Himachal, Ladakh, Uttarakhand, and now in uh, Sikkim. So we completely we cover the whole of Himalaya, where snowbound, which is snowbound, and where avalanche problem is uh, seen. It comes to almost 1.55 lakh square kilometer area where we are operating. We have uh, registered about uh, 33,500 uh, 3, or 3,400 of sites so far, and it's a dynamic process that will go on uh, increasing. We also have a very uh, reasonably good deep network of observatories, uh, manual observatories, as well as automatic weather stations in this complete uh, northern and eastern Himalaya. And that uh, there's about 100 odd places, points from where we get the data regularly to our Manali and Chandigarh station. And then we uh, process the data, analyze the data, and uh, issue various avalanche forecastings. Today, uh, since this is the only uh, agency in India, organization working in snow avalanches in India, we, have, uh, we are extending our services to almost all the uh, users, in all, uh, which includes Army and other paramilitary forces. And also various other agencies which are involved in development of uh, infrastructure in these areas, uh, uh, the tourism department for the ropeways, the uh, NHIDCL type of organization where they are involved in making tunnels, highways, widening of roads, uh, power transmission lines like power grid corporations. So almost everybody who is operating in snowbound area today is associated with SASE or we are associated in providing the technical uh, guidance to the extent possible, and uh, in that way, we are actually uh, helping uh, all those who need the service. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are all aware, avalanche is nothing but uh, the snow mass uh, moving down the slope uh, when it becomes unstable. So, snow per se is not a problem. When it is lying on steep slopes, then at some point of time, a combination of terrain slope, the snowpack condition, and the current weather conditions result in avalanche formation. And this huge mass of snow, as uh, General Bansal was mentioning, uh, comes down hurtling. And the forces which are exerted by these avalanches can be of very, very great dimension. And we, we measured uh, up to 50 tons per meter square and those kind of things where mostly uh, common structures will not be able to take. But there are methods now where uh, we can uh, tackle these. So the avalanche formation is basically a combination of factors related to terrain. You need slope, the aspect, a snowpack, the instability in the snowpack, presence of some weak layer, and the current weather conditions, the amount of snowfall, the rate of precipitation, the overloading, etc. So this combination of these factors give rise that the uh, snowpack becomes unstable and starts moving down the uh, slope. As I said, now we look at uh, the <coughs> Measures uh, that are uh, uh, possible, and then there are a number of uh, ways in which the problem can be tackled, and uh, we are working on that. Uh, the first thing in any hazard is to map the areas which are prone to this hazard, and uh, then we map the avalanche prone areas, and then uh, mark the avalanche sites which are frequently occurring, which pose the threat to public transport of uh, highways, etc. And then we go one step further in zoning. When an avalanche site is demarcated and we know that avalanche comes, then we demark the area, demarcate the area which is likely to release and how it moves. That is where actually there are a number of avalanche dynamics models which come into play. And we try to predict, uh, find out as to where, how long, and how far the avalanche debris is like, the avalanche mass is likely to move, length and width, and at what force, what uh, depth parameter, the flow parameters, so that you can work out the, uh, the impact that the avalanche mass will exert on a obstacle at different points of the avalanche. And then we accordingly, you know, we plan the or regulate the land use, we plan other things. The next uh, uh, thing that we do is the passive uh, method that is avalanche forecasting. You know, this, this is one of the most important uh, parameters, of the most, most important vertical that we have here, for forecasting the avalanches for different areas. So we have, uh, uh, actually map and develop certain uh, avalanche forecasting models, which are actually, there are three, four different things, which vary actually uh, for area to area, depending upon the terrain conditions and the weather conditions. So through these avalanche forecast models, which are basically the uh, statistical models, 
we uh, forecast the avalanches and we issue to various users i will cover that a little later in my talk uh, to various users varying from ranging from army to uh, paramilitary forces and various other users state governments last year we started giving training and uh, forecast to state governments directly then the other method is uh, uh, to bring down the avalanches in a controlled manner through artificial triggering and that is also we are now working on two three different approaches for uh, uh, controlled release or artificial triggering of avalanches to bring down or to reduce the risk level so that the utilization of the road etc can be uh, continued so this is another way uh, by uh, which we uh, reduce the risk and the last is the structural control of avalanches where it becomes necessary they are costly of course it becomes necessary to physically control the avalanches we either prevent it from occurring in the uh, starting zones of the avalanche so you don't allow the avalanche to initiate or otherwise uh, having initiated we modify the path sometimes we directly protect the structure we uh, strengthen the structure or divert the uh, avalanche path away from the facility that we are trying to uh, protect so there are a number of ways and one of the most popular thing that the people have seen in when we go from jammu to srinagar and various areas the avalanche galleries particularly the highways we make those avalanche sheds or with the avalanche are allowed to pass so there are a number of ways and i am very confident the uh, art of the state of the art today is that we can uh, practically protect any facility uh, depending upon the level of protection and uh, the location any facility through structural control when it becomes necessary as i said one of the most important area that we have to handle uh, the complete uh, drr community handles is the uh, you know aware about the danger and that we do through the avalanche forecasting uh, through different models uh, we have these 100 odd places from where we collect the data it comes to us there are uh, numerical and uh, statistical models computer based models where the data is fed and then the people who have got experience in these areas they analyze that use their judgment and then we generate the avalanche warning bulletins and these warning bulletins are issued to various agencies that are uh, Uh, operating in snow bound areas and we are quite confident i mean uh, although this uh, field continuously requires improvement but the avalanche warning bulletins which are issued today by sase are good enough and if we follow all the precautions that are laid down for different level of uh, avalanche uh, that warning uh, then number of casualties and accidents can be avoided so all this data comes here we generate the avalanche forecast and disseminate to various uh, users in different format the most important people who receive this avalanche forecast and this is done from 1st november to 30th of april on every day so without any uh, break uh, we give it to army we give it to through their uh, network we give it to central uh, armed forces border road we also give it to ndma delhi and now we started giving it to sdmas uh, especially in himachal so i am directly sending the avalanche forecast bulletin to various district collectors where the which are the districts which are affected by avalanches so that it can be disseminated to the people in time and people take the precautionary measures we also give it to pti for publication in various electronic media so these avalanche forecasts basically are intended to make the user aware in these areas about the danger and the precautions we need to be taken taken uh, i was mentioning another important area because i have been seeing for a period of time that the bound areas the amount of snow in indian himalayas that they receive varies from uh, roughly say about a meter if i talk of altitudes about 2500 uh, meters then a meter of snow to 5 meter of snow this is the uh, range in which we receive standing snow uh, the total fresh snow is much higher but the total standing snow on ground can vary from 1 meter to 5 meter now this if we have buildings in this area not been designed adequately to take care of this then they can uh, su suffer severe damage the loading which comes onto the building because of these avalanche because of the snow can be much higher than the load which comes because of other and a building or a, uh, a structure which is designed for uh, plain area like delhi etc if it is same thing is used in mountains and snow bound area will not survive and every year year after year we see a lot of damage to buildings so we have actually uh, recently prepared a snow load map for india dividing into five zones based on the intensity of the uh, snowfall for each zone we have a simple formula of calculating based on the location and the altitude the snow load which should be considered and this is called 
characteristic ground snow load and that then gets converted into uh, the design load for the building depending upon the angle of the roof the type of the building the occupation of the building the importance and so on uh, there are about five six factors which affect that this uh, snow load map for india we have known about a year back given to bureau of indian standard uh, where they are, the committee is examining it and uh, it is now put into wider circulation for 20000 people and uh, i am sure uh, another 3 4 months it will get adopted and once it becomes mandatory then all buildings that come in snowbound area becomes get designed for uh, snow loads and a lot of damages to building which happens because of this will be avoided another uh, and i think the most important thing uh, besides the uh, forecasting and uh, mapping etc is the training uh, to test users uh, who are operating in snowbound areas uh, about the safety of movement and uh, establishment in those areas and safety about the, and the rescue uh, methodologies which are available so we conduct a lot of courses around the year about the safety and the rescue uh, in the snowbound areas and this is one single factor i'm sure if uh, the drr community and the public at large which is operating in these areas the users and the local inhabitants if they are all made aware of the dangers involved if they are made aware of the implications of various uh, levels of warning when we issue a lot of uh, casualties a lot of damages to buildings uh, buildings damage is difficult but a lot of casualties can be avoided to the moment of people is uh, completely restricted we have prepared a good amount of literature we have prepared a good amount of uh, material uh, which for educating people about the uh, avalanche dangers and how to interpret the avalanche warnings and how to operate and what precautions to take during the avalanches we got number of posters we got number of computer based trainings uh, so this is another major vertical that we have uh, we, and we intend to actually increase this uh, uh, training aspect uh, drdo as a whole has got the philosophy now of uh, uh, extending the services extending the benefits of technology to the civil sector and that's how we are now uh, directly passing on the avalanche warning bulletins to all the civil areas for which we are uh, which are affected directly to our districts so that uh, it is disseminated to the public all these uh, four states jnk ladakh uh, himachal uh, uttarakhand and sikkim for all these places they are warning now we are trying to extend presently we are doing it for himachal for other states also we directly give it to the affected districts so that that can be uh, this is uh, uh, gentlemen this is what uh, i i feel that uh, uh, although avalanches uh, constitute a major natural hazard uh, i am very sure that uh, this can be the uh, casualties etc the damage can be uh, brought down the risk can be minimized if we uh, you know uh, adopt the take uh, adequate precautions during the avalanche warnings and adopt adequate and proper uh, protective and preventive measures then we can definitely uh, bring down this to uh, almost zero in that manner. And the direction in which SASE here uh, is working. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. We will have the question answer. If there is any any question, I would like to ask that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your remarks, highlighting the function snow of snow and avalanche study establishment in research in the field of snow and avalanche to provide avalanche control measures training to the users, mechanism of avalanche forecasting, starting from data collection to modeling, and forecasting support to Indian Armed Force, NDMAs, and SDMAs, such as Himachal Pradesh, and PTIs for further dissemination of information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Moving ahead, uh, now for our special address, we have with us in demand, head of as in So it is my honor to address you on behalf of uh, Mrs. Demange, who was supposed to, you know, head of corporations, SDC, who was supposed to join us, who is actually online and can hear all the uh, discussions today uh, on to this international webinar and share with you some of the insights from the Swiss experience in the domain of glacial risk management. Uh, or where, you know, being a mountain country, Switzerland, both in um, natural endowments as well disaster risk resilience to protect the local communities. 
For both India and Switzerland, glacial hazards such as ice avalanches, gloves, debris flow have caused severe damage in many populated mountain regions. And this development is becoming more and more worrisome, especially in view of the rapid global warming and related changes in the sensitive mountain cryospheres. In fact, in Switzerland, over the past 20 years, there has been an, on an average uh, 100 reported avalanches a year where people are involved. The Indian Himalayan region is also not an exception to this trend. Uh, and under SDC supported one of the projects, uh, Indo-Swiss joint project called IHCAP or Indian Himalayan Climate Adaptation Project. Uh, experts from University of Geneva had actually compared tree rings of trees in Kullu district of Himachal Pradesh with climate data as far back as 1855 and found that the number of avalanches in that particular uh, district of Himachal Pradesh had increased from one per decade to almost one every year. And this uh, trend also found a close association with the rising temperature, perhaps from anywhere points from Himalayas. Of course, these hazards of glaciers, you know, which occur across the world in the mountain regions are a threat to life, livelihoods and sustainable development. And the management of these risks as uh, 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 Mr. Doctor is a complex and very importantly, communication as well as prevention and mitigation. In Switzerland, which has a comparatively long tradition of dealing with glacial hazards, Research has focused on assessing these hazards and related risks, including risk evaluation approaches involving local stakeholders. In fact, since 1951, which was uh, one of the deadliest avalanche winters in Switzerland, organized avalanche monitoring and mitigation has improved dramatically. This has led to the creation of avalanche bulletin mitigation projects. And uh, Dr. Thanks to such measures in control areas like railways or communities, the 15 year annual average of number of victims has dropped from 15 at the end of 1940s to 2010. Switzerland, you know, globally is today at the forefront of developments in disaster risk, resilience, and management. With its partner countries, including India. Switzerland has been in supporting India in the domain of disaster risk management for more than 15 years now. And of understanding between the two countries, till very recently, Switzerland has been actively engaged with India. The partnership between these two countries was further strengthened through SDC supported projects focusing on strengthening climate change adaptation in the Himalayan ecosystem. Switzerland has brought on board. Uh, you know, it's global development in DMA, and we. In addition, SDC has offered Swiss technical expertise for developing and installing India's first state-of-the-art early warning system for gloves and flash floods in the mountain states of Sikkim and Himachal Pradesh. An important. Uh, aspect of key support under uh, you know its various projects always centers around building capacities of state and national level uh, functionaries and institutions to undertake risk and hazard assessments as well as design and deploy early warning systems and instituting alarms and response protocols to prevent potential losses through this support it is hoped that india will emerge today's webinar is one such step in that direction for this webinar we have with us internationally renowned Swiss expert, Dr. Perry Bartels, along with his colleague, Dr. Perry Bartels, Euler, from the Institute for Snow and Avalanche Research, Davos, sharing their knowledge and experiences in the avalanche risk modeling. I'm grateful to them for kindly agreeing at a very short notice to join us for this webinar. I hope that the technical presentations followed by in-depth discussions will help provide insights into this very important topic. I wish you all fruitful deliberations to the course of webinar today and look forward to learning about this topic more and more. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for highlighting the role and contribution of Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation towards snow avalanches research mitigation. Now for our next address, we have with us our chief guest, Lieutenant Journal Syed Atta Hasnan, member National, Di National Disaster Management Authority. Through most of his 40 years illustrious career, Lieutenant General Saeed Atta Hasnan has served in turbulent environment and hot spot from Sri Lanka to Siachen Glacier, from the Northeast to Jammu and Kashmir, and in the UN operation 
from Mozambique to Rawada. He has seen it all in crucial appointment. He is also a senior fellow with Delhi, with Delhi Policy Group and visiting fellow with Vivekanand International Foundation, two of the Delhi's leading think tanks on strategic affairs. He is eminent speaker and has delivered several lectures in Singapore, London, and many other countries, and also in national security at various military, civil services, and corporate institutions with a view to enhance India's strategic culture. Lieutenant General Hasnan has six decorations awarded by the President of India. Param Visest Seva Medal, Uttam Yudh Seva Medal, Ati Visest Seva Medal, Sena Medal, Vises Seva Medal, Bar, and two medals awarded by the Army Chief. With these words, I would like to pass on the stage to Lieutenant General Saeed Atta Asnan, member NDMA, to encourage and enlighten our participant with his vast experience and knowledge. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Raju Thapa. If you can hear me, uh, General yes, Bindal, I can see you. If you can hear me, just put up your hand. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Uh, what a pleasure and what an honor to be with you all. General Bindal, uh, Ms. Corinne Demans from Switzerland, Dr. Naresh Kumar, we just heard you, Dr. Sudan Shushekar, Dr. Perry Bartel from Switzerland again, Dr. Eves Bula from Switzerland, uh, you, Raju Thapa yourself, and of course, Dr. Surya Prakash. It's a pleasure to be joining you for this uh, wonderful seminar, uh, webinar, and uh, dare I say that uh, it's a rare thing to have a webinar on an issue which most of the country is unaware of, the issue of snow and avalanche risk. Uh, it's also very, I'm very glad to have friends from uh, Switzerland with me. Uh, I am going to be speaking from an angle of a practitioner, because half my life has been spent in these areas only. And I cannot uh, even remember how many avalanches one has encountered and how many times one has seen the destruction, the power of destruction of, of avalanches on heavy snow. So instead of my trying to be technical with you, uh, I think um, uh, Dr. Naresh Kumar outlined it uh, beautifully, uh, the requirements. Uh, he spoke about mapping spoke particularly about awareness and these are two issues which I'm going to dwell upon from a practical user's angle so therefore whatever I'm going to speak is going to be anecdotal to draw your attention and keep your interest um, I've got about 15 minutes to speak uh, after that I have to go for another webinar unfortunately within the NDMA so if there are any questions for me I would always be happy to try and answer them uh, immediately in two or three or four minutes or come back a little later join the webinar and then answer them at that time so with this let me let me my memory back to 2012 march of 2012 i was the goc of the 15 code at srinagar and i was woken up at a night at about uh, one o'clock to, to, to tell me that there had been a huge avalanche uh, 7th of march 2012 a huge avalanche had taken place in gurez uh, I asked them immediately the first question, casualties? They said, sir, so far approximately, it seems about 18 people are under it. Now, what kind of what kind of a avalanche was this? This was the brigade headquarters of the Gurez Brigade. And within that, next next to the brigade headquarters, the complex of the, of the workshop, the EME workshop there. Uh, the workshop had a couple of vehicles parked within, etc. And uh, they were... Well, about 300 meters away from the hillside. The bottom of the hillside, they were about three to 400 meters away from there. Common perception that uh, a snow a avalanche will come and get arrested somewhere down below, if it ever happens. Uh, and the hillside was fairly, not very steep, but it was steep. Sure enough, uh, I, I did, the rescue efforts went on. We, we could not rescue anyone. Next morning, I flew to the spot. Uh, at Gurez, and I discovered what the power of the avalanche was, which is what you just remember, Dr. Naresh Kumar telling you how many tons of snow comes down. Now, this was a spot which no one had ever thought of that there can be an avalanche here, and that's why the workshop was there. This had tons of snow had come down and uh, traveled 400 meters on flat ground. 
So it's not that uh, avalanche will come and come to the bottom of the slope and stop there. 400 meters it had traveled flat along the ground. And en route, there were a number of vehicles parked. Each of these vehicles had been thrown to about 100 to 150 meters beyond, overturned and thrown. This was the power of the avalanche. All the structures there, temporary structures in which the army normally lives in these places, none of them were resilient for or constructed for avalanche. They were smashed completely and 18 people had died. This was, this, this was the state. And this is something which uh, as senior commanders, as people on ground, um, the army is very used to this. This is this kind of thing which keeps happening from time to time. Now, uh, after the whole, the formalities were over and everything, uh, I came back to my headquarters and I asked, I said, give me the Sase, give me the Sase mapping of this area. They brought it out. There was a, the, the Sase had done a beautiful report on it. Uh, I looked at it and I found that Sase had counted this particular slope as in his prediction as a high risk slope for avalanches. And below it was a workshop of the army. What I realized was that in, in, the, in about seven or eight years since the Sase had issued this, this, this warning, no one in my headquarters had read it. And no one was aware of this. No one was aware of this aspect of the risk that you run of being close to a slope, uh, 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 an avalanche prone uh, slope. And then the hope that they were living with, that they were still a very far away the bottom of the slope. This was a lack of awareness, complete act lack of awareness. So I thought this much, I just to highlight this to you. Sase was not wrong. Sase was right. Absolutely. The question was of believability, uh, the trust aspect of Sase's report. And I'm so glad that you have got the director Sase here with you. And uh, we've got officials from Sase. And uh, I am like a brand ambassador of Sase because I, I keep speaking about it. Uh, all over. I can tell you I suffered in 2007. I suffered a similar thing. Uh, a particular area in Udi on the Shamshabari. Shamshabari, certain areas, you get 30, 35 feet of snow inside the bowls there. Now, there was a bowl there, a particular bowl, which I was aware of. I had commanded my brigade there. I was now commanding my division. And I was aware that avalanches do not always take place from slopes. They many times take place from piled up snow on top of rocks, flat rocks. And avalanches normally take place in the morning hours at about between 10, 30, 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Afternoon is the worst time for it. I had, I had a picket in January, which I was supposed to withdraw. I was forced by my higher headquarters to keep the picket there because there was a, the threat of infiltration. And I kept telling them, these lives are under threat. They said, no, nothing will happen. These are people who had never, ever seen an avalanche in their lives. And sure enough, I had a snowstorm on the 9th of January 2007. We had a huge snowstorm. I knew that next five days the snowstorm will go on, and now it is impossible to extract these men. You cannot extract people uh, when the snowstorm is on. That is, that is like committing suicide. So the snowstorm subsided, but there was a huge pile up of snow. And uh, to pull them out from there to the mother base was a distance of just about two kilometers. But two kilometers in the mountains in this area is like walking for two days in that kind of snow levels. I warned my people not to move. I said, just stay there. Let the snow stabilize. But uh, human beings under stress can take amazing decisions. And they decided to take a risk. And they started moving. They started moving back. So the, the troops at the mother base sent a few civilian porters to try and help extract them from there. And en route, exactly what I'm telling you, not anywhere near a slope, but from a piled up, huge pile up of snow on rocks, the snow came down. Why? It, they were attempting to come from there, extract themselves to the mother base at 12.30 in the day. Sacrilege. You don't move in avalanche prone areas, you don't move in the mountains beyond 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning. This is what we always do in Siachen. I've commanded my unit in Siachen. 
I can tell you this with abundance of confidence. You don't move. You have to make sure that you are early risers. Get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Do your work in the morning. Work till 9 o'clock. But after 9 o'clock, seize all activity. Because that is the time when you are most prone uh, to, to avalanches. So this kind of a thing is all, you're, you're always uh, prone to this kind of risk. Now, now let me tell you, when, it, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, Dr. Naresh Kumar tells you about awareness, let me tell you how a sase warning uh, sent out to the environment needs to be treated and how it is treated. Many times I observed that sase warnings in my earlier years, I noticed that as a brigade commander, I was getting a warning given by sase, uh, avalanche warning by given by sase. I was getting it three days later in the mail, surface mail, coming to me received by my headquarters staff put up to me next morning with a uh, with a remark uh, first sight dark you know it, it was something of the sacrilege again as i say the lack of understanding of what is the urgency to inform people about avalanche warnings so when i reached a position of authority i said never again will this happen in my command a sase warning which comes to me at six o'clock in the evening my entire core, every single man to the last, will know about this warning by 8 o'clock. And I got my staff involved to get this done. How did we get it done? Nothing will go in writing. Everything will go by telephone, by word of mouth. And it will be recorded and signed. And next morning it will be put up to me to tell me who all were informed about this, at what time. Let me tell you, in one week's time, the system was clear. I could ring up anyone at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night and ask them, are you aware that your area has an avalanche warning? And if he told me he was not aware of it, then I would go back in the system. I would go back to the system to see where the fault lay. What I'm going to tell you is, we have the technology. We have the capability in a wonderful organization like SASE. But we are completely lacking in awareness. We are lacking in a sense of commitment. We are lacking in a sense of focus to save lives simply because we are not aware of where the threats lie. Uh, thanks to Sase, some very good work has been done in a place like Gulmarg, which saw a terrible um, avalanche in the year 2010. If I can remember 2009 and 10, right on the lily white slopes where the beautiful um, uh, uh, ski slopes where these uh, a high altitude warfare school does its training just there. Can you imagine? For years it has been happening. Ski slopes are there, and for years we've been doing it, but you had an unpredicted uh, high, high quantity of snow which have accumulated there. And it came down. All of it came down together. Later, Sase has gone there, and uh, with their advice, a lot of avalanche arresters have been, have been constructed there. And they have worked. They have worked wonderfully. So the technology of uh, Avalanche arresters is very much a very uh, effective technology which diverts the flow of the avalanche, the snow which is coming down. It diverts it from the target area, from that potential area where it can come and uh, accumulate. So if you've got um, a habit, habitat, a habitation at the bottom of a hill somewhere and you want to divert the snows, then obviously it's, uh, avalanche arresters can be uh, very, very effective. Uh, markers, avalanche markers based upon mapping to warn people not to move in them and as i said earlier timings timings is one of the very very important aspects i do remember that particular valley complete valley from nogam to the tutmari gali in the nipa uh, is completely prone to avalanches both it's a narrow valley and both sides avalanches and even at night avalanches come so um, i had a system in my area because you can't stop movement after all Every single jawan and officer cannot be pulled out by helicopter to go on leave or on temporary duty and things like that. So they have to move on foot. And, uh, and the roads are closed during winter because the vehicles cannot move on them. So it's a long march from there. It's a long march from, from the higher reaches and people are going on leave. So mostly the movement, I, in my time at least I ensured, movement was only by night. Only by night. And uh, we had uh, small transit points in the middle in which lights were available, refreshment was available, um, uh, rescue, avalanche rescue parties, ARTs, ARTs are very, very important elements. Uh, they were located there. 
at least one master avalanche rescue team with a snow dog an avalanche rescue dog an avalanche rescue dog is an amazing animal um, he can smell out from under snow he can smell out any place where um, the, the, there is human life still existing he can smell it out so one or two places where avalanche rescue teams with um, uh, uh, avalanche rescue dogs were located and i saw through two winters without a casualty just by organization simply by organization and let me tell you also if the district administration as much as a brigade headquarter or a div headquarter or any other headquarter of the army or the paramilitary forces or CAPFs, anyone, if they at the beginning of the winter make themselves aware, and if they have got a couple of people who have the core information and core capability to understand what avalanches are all about or what high snow levels are all about, then with their assistance, if instructions are made out for every winter, and this needs to be repeated winter to winter, because people are changing in all these locations from time to time. And uh, in the winter, to keep reiterating these instructions to people. Because most of us think that in the month of November, we have made instructions and therefore till March, we can sit back. Let me tell you, it doesn't work that way. It works with the, your leadership, your, your insurance to make sure that that information is reiterated to the people. Otherwise, human memory in the maze of things that you do every day is just forgotten. And, and, and dangers existing in all over like this, just, it, they, they just cannot be realized by us. Uh, I'm coming to the end of what I wanted to tell you, as I've spoken about Sase bulletins. Um, um, I can tell you that uh, you can have all kinds of strangest of dangers and threats to life under high snow conditions. I was there in the tsunami, the snow tsunami of 2005, which was being referred to just now by Mr. Thapa, I was there very much, uh, I think by Ms., uh, Dr. Naresh Kumar, I was very much there at that time. Uh, I can also re recall my memory of a particular post in one of my uh, brigade uh, areas. High level of snow um, in uh, on the Pir Panjal, uh, levels of, at a height of about 12,500, 13,000 feet, not very high, but very high levels of snow. And uh, we had communication trenches. And in the communication trenches, which are dug trenches, you know, in which soldiers can move without being seen by the enemy. In winter, a lot of uh, snow piles up into these trenches. So what happens is that uh, the troops, they keep digging out the snow, soft snow from the uh, trenches and throwing them on the side. And on the side, a huge pile up of snow takes place. Now you will surprise what kind of a threat can happen. In the early morning at 4 o'clock, the cook, who is the first person to rise uh, early in the morning in, a, in, a, in any subunit of the army, he gets up in the morning and he wants to go to do his morning ablutions. As soon as he gets out of his bunker, his glassy ice there, his foot slips and he goes diving into soft snow, which is 12 to 14 feet deep and he cannot come out and he dies inside that. Next morning, no one can find him. It takes 8 to 10 hours to discover where the hell has he gone. These are the kind of threats you find with high snow levels. These are man-made issues. So what is the answer to it? Movement in the mountains, movement in high altitude areas must be done only in buddy pairs, only two people. Even if you are going to the bathroom in the morning, you should be two people who should go. So that you are talking to each other and you know at any one time someone has disappeared, you know there's a problem which has taken place. So with this, I, as I told you, mine is all, uh, is all anecdotal. I can go on hours telling you of the experiences one has had in the, in the mountains. This is one of the... This is one of the domains, one of the hazards, which is very, very less known to people in, in, in India. Switzerland has all the, all the expertise. And I'm so glad that we have tied up with, a, uh, with an institution in Switzerland, uh, a mastermind institution in Switzerland, which can guide us on this all the time. And we've got Sase with us, which is an institution and a center of excellence by itself. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad that I, I, had, a, I had a chance to uh, be with you all. Uh, for a short while, if there are any questions, uh, I can take maybe one or two questions now, and I later I can come back to subsequently. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you, Thank sir, for thought provoking words and sharing your vast experience, information, knowledge, expertise with our participants.
sir we have one question for uh, from our participant uh, dipankar paul uh, sir should i yeah yeah read it out to me sir uh, the question is in time of avalanche scenario what are the sop used by our soldiers to save themselves from ongoing snow, snow avalanche disaster okay thank you very much uh, i think uh, even even uh, director sasse could tell you that in very technical terms but let me tell you the sops that we normally have for this the moment if you are moving already if you are moving already uh, and you have an encountered an avalanche first of all let me tell you in most cases of avalanche the early warning of avalanche is a huge blast if it's a big avalanche it's a huge blast which takes place on the mountain top when snow you know parts and then it starts hurtling down you have about 30 seconds 40 seconds 45 seconds maybe to a minute depends upon the level from where the snow is coming down now you cannot outrun an avalanche let me tell you that an avalanche is much faster than you it is faster than the olympic champion in 100 let me tell you right so don't think that you can go in the opposite direction and get away from an avalanche unless you are very very far away right so just as can you hear me i hope um, i'm finding some problem yes sir you are audible sir okay okay so you can you can hear you sir right right so uh, what i'm trying to tell you is in most cases it is recommended you run towards the avalanche now this is a very difficult thing to to get into the mind that if you run towards the avalanche the ch greater chances are that the avalanche will pass over you the, the avalanche will go over you and pass away and you will be running against it you will be able to emerge out of it if the avalanche engulfs you the first thing first drill is you start swimming you try to start swimming you means you must beat your hands in a forward direction you must beat your hands why should you do this simply the reason why you should do it is you must create an air pocket around your face so that when this avalanche stops at that time your face is not engulfed by the mass of snow otherwise you can't breathe therefore if you have created an air space around you a large enough air space you still have oxygen available air available with you you can last out two hours and in those two hours if an avalanche rescue team comes there and an avalanche rescue dog comes there particularly he'll be able to discover you and you will find that someone will dig you out and 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 and, and get you out they also say that you must keep as far as possible you must keep your one of your arms at a higher level above your head when you are when you are waiting for the avalanche to pass over you because once that happens at least your arm is right on top and your pulling you out from the avalanche becomes a little easier so there are many such sops one of the most important things of course is that once you have made that air pocket remove all the snow which is around your nose and your mouth because you must ensure that you don't get starts freezing your nose and extremity start freezing that must not happen you must breathe immediately with it so the chan and i've seen many people survive let me tell you in siachen we have had number of places where people have survived we've had a bad avalanche in 2016 when you remember hanuman thappa of 19 madras survived but unfortunately died in the rr hospital 10 of those jawans had uh, died all buried under 35 feet of ice which came down on them now that kind of an avalanche there is very little that you can do although uh, to their credit the army uh, flew up to a post where there are 10 men they flew uh, they flew 320 sorties with equipment helicopters with equipment snow cutters ice cutters and every possible thing to try and rescue those people all 10 boys were taken out from the from below the avalanche but unfortunately none of them lived uh, to tell us the tale so one can go on on this there are many such drills and this is what i was trying to tell you that we need to make communities aware of this communities by themselves in high altitude areas are generally aware of most things but bringing to them scientific research of the sase is a responsibility of the local government which means the district officials etc must be in touch with the expertise of sase and that that is the what will ultimately act as the life saving um, efforts which will go on there thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you very much sir and i on behalf of all the dignitaries and participants i would like to thank you sir for sparing your so precious time and sharing your experience with us
Now I would like to call upon Dr. Hajit Kaur, young professional NIDM, to present a vote of thanks to all our dignitaries of the webinar. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, it's my privilege to have been asked to pose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to our chief guest, uh, left, uh, Chief Guest Lieutenant General Sayyid Atta Hasnain, member NDMA, for sparing his precious time from his busy sh schedule for providing encouragement and support to all. Naresh Kumar, Outstanding Scientist and Director, Snow and Avalanche Study Establishment, DRDO, for his presence and also for his enormous cooperation and support in organizing of this webinar series. I also extend my thanks to Ms. Corinne Demenge, Head of Cooperations with Agency for Development and Cooperation for accepting our request to organize international webinar. Also, I wish to express my gratitude to Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, EDNIDM, for providing innovative and encouraging environment, moral guidance, continuous enthusiasm, and valuable suggestion throughout NIDM endeavor. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Dr. Sudhan Shekhar, scientist from SASE, DRDO, Dr. Perry Barlett, and Dr. E. Buller from Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation and Professor Suri Prakash at GMR Division NIDA for their presence to enlighten our participants with their vast knowledge and experience. I hope this international webinar will be fruitful one and all the participants will have some takeaways point from this program. Thank you very much. Now over to you, Mr. Raju Thapa. Thank you, Dr. Harjit Kaur. With that, we have come to the end of our inaugural session and we will start our technical session. At the onset of technical session, I would welcome all our distinguished speaker participant who has joined us via Cisco WebEx platform and several others who are watching us via YouTube. Your active participation is important uh, in this session and you can enter your questions and queries in the question answer session box. And we will have your question answered uh, session at the end of the webinar after all the presentation of from the distinguished speaker are over. And uh, minimum 60% attendance in Cisco WebEx platform is mandatory to be eligible for uh, participation certificate. So for our first presentation, we have Dr. Sudhansu Sekhar, scientist of SASE DRDO. He joined the uh, SASE in August 2016 and has significantly contributed toward operation, uh, operational mountain weather and avalanche forecast from the uh, for the snowboard area of uh, Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir and UT of Ladakh, Himachal, uh, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. He has executed several DRDO projects, prestigious project Parvat Central with the coordination of Army, Indian Tibetan Borders Police, IMD, and National Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. He has also published 40 scientific papers in various national and international journals to his credit. He has also received various prestigious awards, including the Dr. Uh, Anandu Venekar Award in 2009 for the best paper in international journal, Young Collaboration Fellow, uh, Fellowship in 2000, in 2000 to carry out research in International Center for theoretical physics in Italy. Uh, with these words, I would like to call upon, pass on the stage to Dr. Uh, to Dr. Sudhan Susekhar. Over to you, sir. Yeah, sorry again. So let us start. Uh, as you know uh, that uh, the Himalaya, it attracts people all over the world and to unfold its mystery uh, from time to time. And it continues to be a center for attraction uh, for the pilgrims and ad adventurists. Uh, during winter, uh, from November to April, uh, many parts of uh, Indian Himalayas uh, is affected due to severe weather conditions, synaptic features known as western disturbances, uh, which gives a lot of snow. Uh, and due to this copious amount of snow, the Indian part of Himalayas is affected by the avalanches. Uh, now, uh, 
the heavy snowfall and gala winds that is associated with these western disturbances causes snow avalanches and uh, road blockages in the snowbound areas of uh, many parts of indian himalayas and now coming to the main uh, topic the snow avalanche it is nothing but the sudden downward motion of snow mass as already discussed by many of our dignitaries here and it may contains rocks soils trees etc and it may uh, it can exert pressure up to 50 ton per meter square which is a great enough to damage several buildings or vehicles which comes in its path and uh, it the volume range generally varies from 100 meter cube to 10 to the power 6 meter cube now what are the avalanche hazard implications in this part of the indian himalayas of course it affects pedestrian movements cuts villages say lots of and uh, vehicular movements are uh, being affected and it affects military operations uh, their movements and their day to day uh, operational activities they are generally carried out in the snowbound regions of the indian himalayas and of course it damages hill roads and dams in its its rock fall disrupt communications and uh, more importantly uh, it affects the psyche of the person who got affected by this avalanches coming to the next slide the data shows that during winter from november to april it's roughly about 180 days the lower altitude generally gets rain and higher altitude generally gets snow and most of the avalanche accidents that occurs during the snowfall that means when the snowfall is continuing and the second most dangerous situation is that the immediately after the snowfall when the when the snow storm ceases and it gets a sunny i mean clear day so that is why most of the time we generally advise not to venture in the sunshine hours if you want to go somewhere then you go during the morning hours so where there is no sunshine and this is some of the avalanche hazard in the avalanche prone areas uh, every year a lot of avalanche incidents and casualties of army paramilitary forces and civilians takes place in indian himalayas they are by causing a lot of lives and property now since uh, the mountain weather is one most important parameters for the avalanche to occur hence there has always been a requirement of both mountain weather and avalanche forecast for the following personnel as well as agencies such as indian army itbp bro uh, mountaineers recreationists expeditioners state administrators state administrators rescuers and public at large for their respective job now it is because of this severe weather situations resulting in release of massive avalanches that has come into being uh, realizing the importance of keeping snowbound roads open for longer duration in the snowbound regions of indian himalayas and to safeguard people and their property for the menak of this avalanche sasa max beginning in the year 9 at manali at one of the laboratory of defense research and development organizations and already told by our director the main focus in the initial phase of sasa was only to collect uh no data and archive it for the future research and since accurate prediction of western disturbances and associated precipitation plays an important role in prediction of avalanches in snowbound areas predicting western disturbances and the associated precipitation became the core work of sase in subsequent years now a program on mountain meteorology was launched by the then scientific advisor of drdo to raksha mantri and our former president of india dr apj abdul kalam 
and sasa started mountain weather forecast independently by the end of 90s you can say and at present sasa provides mesoscale mountain weather forecast six days above it is using a mesoscale very popular uh, mesoscale model weather instruction forecasting model and uh, uh, and we are using national center for medium weather uh, medium range weather forecasting popularly known as ncmr wf at noida india and their global data is being used as the initial condition and boundary condition into this mesoscale model to generate uh, mountain weather forecast six days in advance at three by three kilometer spatial resolution and we are also using uh, three dimensional variational data assimilation into the wrf model by using our own sase observatory as well as automatic weather station data so all these uh, uh, forecast is being generated and disseminated to our users through various channels uh, now coming to the avalanche forecast the area of responsibility of sase encompasses indian part of western central and eastern himalaya uh, particularly eastern himalaya means i want to say the sikkim state and uh, we map we have mapped avalanche sites along various routes and axes in avalanche prone areas uh, where army and civilian movement takes place routinely by ground recce aerial recce and by using remote sensing and gis technology since the snow meteorological parameters from avalanche prone areas are used in prediction models to assess the avalanche danger sasa has Established a vast network of observatories as well as automatic weather stations uh, at various elevation in Indian Himalayas. The picture shows the surface observatories at Gulmarg, and uh, these automatic stations, uh, automatic weather stations, have been installed in the high altitude areas in the Siachen glaciers. Now, regular snow map data is being collected from the observatory network. and sent to research and development center at our chandigarh through our mountain meteorological centers at various places and through the headquarters sase manali here we generate both mountain weather and avalanche forecast and finally the forecast is disseminated to the users through the same mountain meteorological centers as well as directly from research and development centers at or rdc at chandigarh uh we generally use both active and passive methods for forecasting and managing the avalanche in snowbound avalanche prone areas in active methods or active methods generally involves the controlled release or artificial triggering i would not like to uh, talk much about this and of course the uh, next active methods is the structural control or putting structures to minimize the movement of the avalanche in the snowbound areas and the frs stations and of course the passive method is the avalanche forecasting and avalanche awareness to our users now coming to the avalanche forecast we assess the avalanche danger in the active snow avalanche zones daily using various avalanche prediction models and issue avalanche danger warning to the areas among the various methods of avalanche hazard mitigation and management the indirect or passive method that i told is the avalanche prediction or avalanche forecast avalanche forecasting is the most economically viable effective and practically suitable methods as it can be applied to a large area and requires a much lesser investments as compared to direct or active methods avalanche forecasting may be predicted at various special scale levels as per the requirement of users mountain weather prediction and prediction of snow amount is an integral part of the avalanche forecasting with the advancement in computing technology database management tools and decision making algorithms avalanche forecasting has benefited a lot of people now we generate avalanche forecast every day for next 24 hours during winter from november to april the forecast is being sent to various users through different ch channel we have our army channel uh, army channel and we also send our forecast to the civil 
through the National Disaster Management Authority (NDMA) and as well as SDMA of Himachal Pradesh, PTI, UNI, etc. Now, along with army and other paramilitary forces deployed in high mountain snowbound areas of Indian Himalaya, Tasa has also been identified by National Disaster Management Authority and the State Disaster Management sorry, State Disaster Management Authority of Himachal Pradesh to share its knowledge, experience, and expertise of avalanche forecast with the civil society as well. Uh, that expertise, infrastructure, and services that we render from avalanches may be very useful to the public authorities and administrations. So the next slides will show the format in which we generally issue our avalanche forecasting district-wise in UT of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, UT of Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, and Uttarakhand through the National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, New Delhi. And we would able to locate where exactly the avalanche can occur spatially. Also, we can predict the avalanche based on the weather condition. During winter, we keep a watch on the possible occurrences of the avalanches and do alert to the army personnel as well as civil authorities so that the common man is not affected by the event, particularly those who are going to high altitude for adventures, sports, and other privileges. This is the blueprint exactly below for the uh, avalanche forecast. There are five different levels, and uh, the forecast is being disseminated accordingly. This unlikely low, medium, high, and all around, and everything, every uh, level has its own SOPs. And generally, the army as well as civil persons uh, follow these five levels of warning. Uh, the thing is that we, if somebody is unaware of this avalanche warning and we are giving unlikely it doesn't mean that there will be no avalanche but you have to take the you know advice from the snow and avalanche study establishment and then you have to move sometimes this interpretation and misinterpretation of uh, avalanche forecast goes fail and the people got caught in the avalanche in the snowbound areas of himalaya so it needs to be seriously followed if sase gives the this pipe level warning of avalanches. Now, coming to the safety and rescue training, we have avalanche awareness materials and products in the form of books, bruises. And before that, I want to say that generally people are uh, unaware of the snowbound areas and uh, got caught in the avalanches. So we have the locate the people you can see here in this picture in the uh, in the second in the top that we have the ability to locate the people buried under the avalanches and as a part of passive mitigation methods we impart training to army troops regularly on safe movements in avalanche prone areas safety and rescue methods along with snow made data collection uh, recently we imparted uh, third we are training to the 30 members of uh, quick response teams of Himachal Pradesh in 2019. And uh, for the 2020 also, fortunately, our training program is ready. But we could not able to, uh, you know, impart the training till now due to the this uh, pandemic that is going on in the country and in the world. However, uh, it is ready with us. Yeah, so we have uh, already avalanche awareness materials and products in the form of books, brochures, uh, posters, CDs, and DVDs for the army population residing in avalanche prone snowbound areas of Indian Himalayas. All these type of resources can also be prepared and shared with National Disaster Management Authorities and the disaster management authorities of the states which are having high altitude areas with avalanche conditions during winter disaster rescue forces of the states can also utilize these materials yeah now since the infrastructures communications power transportations and housing are badly affected by the snow avalanches 
in snowbound regions as another part of the active mitigation method to protect th these buildings, highways, power transmission towers, ropes, and other infrastructures. We have designed, developed, and installed uh, different avalanche control structures for different avalanche zones so that their speed, volume, and runout can be controlled within, within the tolerable ranges. This picture shows the mounts and diversion walls that has been uh, installed by SASE at the Holy Sri Badrinath Dham Temple in Uttarakhand, India. Now, a numerous solution and suggestions have also been provided to various national and state agencies on different structures for protecting and mitigation from avalanches. If any such requirement comes in future, it can be taken into account and solution can be provided, provided by using both active and passive methods to the uh, state, uh, civil state authorities. We have also uh, a very good research station in Himachal Pradesh for carrying out snow avalanche dynamic experiments as per the international standards. Uh, finally, uh, I would uh, like to say that in due course, SASE has emerged as a front research center in cold region science and engineering for saving precious life in snowbound mountainous regions of Indian Himalay. SASE is actively, already actively engaged in basic and applied research in area of cold region science since then and is striving hard to reduce the sufferings of Indian troops and civilians in terms of stability in harsh extreme conditions of Indian Himalayas. The activities of SASE have increased a many fold and it has taken up state of the art projects of national importance and have emerged as one of the premier establishment of DRDO and is recognized as a center of excellence for cold region science and technology. Thank you very much. If there will be any questions, I will be happy to Thank you. take it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. We will take the question after we are over with all our presentations. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, you have given a detailed presentation uh, and you have focused on the avalanche forecasting management. We have learned how SASE has developed over the years and also the various forecasting uh, such as NCMRWF, area of responsibility, SASE observatory and automatic weather stations. And you have also very nicely focused on the dissemination of avalanches information to civil through NDMA. Thank you, sir. Now for uh, our next presentation, we have two experts, Dr. Perry Bartlett and Dr. Eve Buller from Swiss Academy from uh, for development and cooperation. Uh, Dr. Perry, after earning his PhD in 1989 and working three years in renowned international firm HILTI, he has worked as the WSL Institute for Snow and Avalanche Research, uh, Research in Davos since 1994, developing the RAMMS software for snow avalanches and debris flow, advancing theories governing granular flow, solid fluid interaction, and soil impact. The well-known RAMMS software is now used throughout the world for hazard mitigation. Along this journey, he has written over 100 research papers and accompanied by 15 PhD students. He is presently working on his uh, three-part book, Avalanches Dynamic for Engineers. Join him, we have Dr. Eve Buller, he has been a member of the RAMMS core team for the numerical simulation of snow avalanches, debris flow, and rock flow since 2009 after completion of his PhD degree from University of Zurich, Switzerland. He is currently a remote sensing specialist, senior researcher, and project leader with the WSL Institute for Snow and Avalanche Research, SLF, Switzerland, leading national and international projects. Research interest is remote sensing of natural hazard in high alpine terrain. He is also a recipient for several research fellowships. With these words, I will kindly like to pass on the stage uh, to Dr. Uh, 
Dr. Buller, Dr. Buller and uh, Dr. Perry. Over to you, sir. Well, can you see me? Good morning. Is uh, can you hear me yes, and sir. can you see me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Uh, well, the first thing I would like to do is express my gratitude to the Swiss Development Corporation uh, for inviting us to talk. Uh, we, uh, the reason why we immediately accepted this great privilege was because I wanted to meet the new director of SASE, uh, Dr. Kumar. Uh, I, I've met in the past every uh, director of SASE, and uh, Eve and I have both been to India many times, and we have truly enjoyed working uh, with the scientists of SASE. So the second thing I would like to say is I would like to greet all of the uh, SASE scientists uh, that we know in the field of engineering and avalanche dynamics, and there are so many, and we've had such a good collaboration over the many, many years uh, that it's truly an honor uh, to be talking with you uh, today. And that's the primary reason why Eve and I are here. Uh, we have a great respect for Sase. We have a great uh, love for, not for Chandigarh, but for Manali. And uh, we are truly hoping uh, to return uh, again and to meet many of the scientists and to, uh, uh, to engage ourselves or to re-engage this cooperation between the SLF, the Swiss Snow and Avalanche Research Center and, and Sase. Um, what I realize is, is that uh, in over the past few years, this uh, collaboration has has sort of fallen apart. It's not as intensive as it was perhaps in in the years two thousand and ten. Uh, I regard that as a shame, and uh, we have to do, make every effort uh, to reestablish that and to re-energize uh, this uh, collaboration. The uh, SASE and the SLF have. Uh, our sister organizations, uh, they have many commonalities. And one of the great commonalities is the reason why we began. And we began because we had, Switzerland had problems on its borders uh, during the Second World War. Uh, Avalanche, the first, one of the first products that came out of the Swiss Snow and Avalanche research was the Avalanche Bulletin. And that came out, uh, the exact date is the 21st of January of uh, 1945. Now, immediately after the war, uh, the Swiss researchers began uh, doing research on snow and avalanches. And here, I think it is extremely important uh, to realize that there was a fundamental research, there was basic physics and basic mechanics but there was also a great desire to do something practical, to develop tools and methods uh, for real avalanche mitigation. And I think that the success of Switzerland has been in developing these tools and translating these tools into practice and making these tools available to as many people as possible. So that, that is our recipe for success, and I think it is the recipe for success for SASE. So uh, we, we are, we're still on this way. Now, one of the interesting things uh, that I, uh, you know, um, I very much enjoyed the, the informative uh, talk of Dr. Kumar, and I think he summed up the entirety of the snow and avalanche research very well. I especially enjoyed the very energetic talk, uh, talk of uh, Brigadier General Hasnane, and I think he very well highlighted the uh, problems and the practical problems in an uh, in a, in a very uh, a very good way of of of, of avalanches. And um, what what I would like to do in my talk is perhaps not present uh, the whole history, but present what we are working on now. And where I see there are tremendous opportunities for collaboration in the future. Now, one of the things that we've been working on intensely has been our, uh, as, as, the, as the person who, inter who presented us is the model RAMS. The model RAMS is no longer the simple avalanche model that it was 10 years ago when uh, the last time I think I was at, in, at Sase. Uh, over the course of time, this model has been developed to include glacial hazards, 
to include ice avalanches, to include rock avalanches and combinations of those. It has also been developed to include the effects of powder clouds, uh, these very dangerous phenomena of air blasts. And as we've developed these new models, uh, what we've also been doing uh, which is in a tremendously important part of our work, is we've been validating them and calibrating them. What one should realize today, and that's why my partner, uh, Dr. Eve, is with me, is because we've been working very, very closely on obtaining data to validate these models, to make their predict predictive capacity much better and much greater uh, uh, in the future, and now and in the future. So in our presentation, uh, what we uh, want to what we want to present is a sort of an overview of uh, some of the applications and some of the research directions that we see going on uh, in the future. So, uh, and what we've decided to do is that Eve is going to make the presentation. So I hope you can call up the PowerPoint now. Perry already said, we want to focus today on the numerical avalanche modeling work we are doing at SLF. Uh, we made some really nice steps in the last uh, years and we, we we want to present you just recent research outcomes and, and how we work with the numerical simulations. Um, focus of the SLF avalanche modeling is now not only on the normal flowing dense flow avalanches, but more on, on the ice, rock, mix, snow avalanches. Uh, and there especially important is powder pressure. We will show in case studies afterwards why. The entrainment of snow and debris and rocks is very important. And also the temperature and the generation of meltwater is very, very important for the runout distance to predict the runout distance of these large avalanches. And in the recent years, uh, we got remote sensing tools, technology that is very important to generate, first of all, very good digital elevation models, but also to measure snow depth and to get accurate data for validating the model. That is very important. If we model something, we want to know how accurate is our modeling. And this is only possible if we have very well captured real events. And as you will see, uh, many of our validation case studies, they come from the Himalayas, just because you might have the most extreme events all over the world, because you have this amazing topography. And one application we wanna show you is then the large scale hazards mapping so we apply the model on a large scale for an entire region or even entire country to predict where avalanche danger is present and where are the safe spots to build a camp for example the first example we want to show is from 2015 you might remember uh, this large ice avalanche that was triggered by the earthquake the huge earthquake in Nepal, and it killed uh, a lot of mountaineers in the base camp. But interestingly, these people were not killed by the dense flowing snow. They were killed by the powder cloud and the powder pressure. So afterwards, as you see in the picture C, uh, there was no avalanche deposits, just a fine layer of, of snow, snow powder but everything was destroyed. People were smashed against the rocks, uh, were killed uh, by thrown around. All the tents were destroyed, but not by the dense flow part, just by the powder pressure part of the avalanche. And you see this moraine in the, in the 3D visualization, this moraine stopped the avalanche, but the powder cloud went further and destroyed the camp. And this told us, okay, it's very important not only to simulate the flow, but also the powder pressure, because the powder pressure can be very destructive. And these are then the simulations we did. Uh, on the left side, you see the core where the avalanche was flowing. It was stopped more or less completely by the moraine. And on the right side, you have the powder pressure. And you see that the powder pressure with these fingers reaches the base camp. And this is 
what caused the destruction without having a big avalanche deposit afterwards. So that was the first very big ice avalanche event. We simulated with the new RAMS model, with the RAMS extended, which is the scientific model. And now with this model, things like that can be simulated, back calculated and understood how, how this uh, happened. And this is kind of an overview uh, how the whole model is is uh, is uh, providing or calculating information. First, you have the initiation where large blocks of ice. In that case, I think it was blocks of uh, a height of twenty to thirty meters of ice, so huge blocks of ice. They start to move in a very steep terrain. They take air inside. They start to fluidize. They, the particles get smaller and the air in the end also blows out uh, from the core when the core is uh, getting pressed together and produces a very, very fast uh, and destructive cloud. It's a very fast wind, but it's not only wind, it's also snow particles. So the density is something around five gigs per cubic meter, not very dense, but enough to destroy houses, tents, and kill people. Uh, and very new is that we have a multi-component model. So we have not only snow in the model, but we have air, we have rock, we have ice, we have water, and we can take in debris, which is treated differently than, than snow. And we have still the, the flow model of the core that is still there. It's from the traditional RAMs but ex extended with the, the powder pressure model, the powder air blast, blast and the entrainment of snow cover, water and debris. So second very destructive example is the Langtang snow ice avalanche. You see here the picture of the village, everything completely destroyed, but still, again, outside of the dense flowing part of the avalanche. It's not the dense deposition that's in the background, 50 meters of deposition. But these houses were outside that zone, just destroyed by the powder pressure. And I hope now this is working. This is the, should be the simulation. It's not to run. That, that would be the simulation, how this comes down. Maybe when I go out. Working like that. Code unavailable. So this is unfortunately not working here, but I have the video here. So I can show it. Okay, Harry's computer is not fit no, enough. It's open with. Okay. It's open with. Excuse me, sir. You cannot uh, share your videos through um, share content. Yeah. To uh, share your videos, you have to use different options. You can do that okay. after your. Okay, so we, we leave we leave that video. It would be nice to see how the how the cloud is is uh, simulated. Okay, now the application. What we did is now taking the RAMS model and simulating, in this case, small skier triggered avalanches for entire Switzerland. So all the avalanches that could develop uh, from the terrain perspective were simulated as individual avalanches. So in total here around 800,000 avalanches, which are dangerous for skiers uh, all over Switzerland. And to show that a little better, I show here uh, an extract. This is the region of Davos. This is where Perry and I am sitting just below the lake. And this is how it looks. All these individual avalanche release zones we automatically detect uh, based on the terrain model and then simulated with RAMs to see where these avalanches would flow. This is a very optimistic scenario because it's just for skier uh, avalanches. But we also have the model for more extreme 
And this is uh, an application from the Himalayas, the Salang Pass Road in Afghanistan. There are three different options where the road could go, and they're currently investigating which is the best option. Uh, but there is nearly no avalanche observation, very sparse. Some avalanche tracks are observed. So uh, the engineering office that uh, is uh, leading a part of the project asked us to do this large scale simulation for the entire area. And now they can evaluate where does the road uh, face avalanche problems potentially. And also they can calculate which uh, road locations are safe to build something like shelters uh, or stations for the grooming machinery. And they can also calculate in total which road uh, line would face least avalanche problems. But as you see in this terrain, uh, there is a lot of avalanches possible in this area. So now some words to the uh, collaboration we had with SASE. Myself, I stayed in 2012, I stayed three months at SASE working at the uh, HQ SASE uh, together with the SASE scientists on avalanche simulations along the Manali Le Highway, especially the entrance to the to the tunnel was the focus area. And what you see here is uh, one simulation we did in 2012 uh, for an avalanche uh, threatening the road to the to the tunnel entrance uh, in Manali. So as Perry already said, we have a very long tradition. So I think the last three or four directors uh, of SASE, they all spent several months at SLF doing training, doing scientific collaborations. We have also collaborations with the terrain lab of DRDO. We did some workshops together with them for rock falls and then debris flows. Um, there were two conferences at Manali where uh, several scientists of uh, SLF uh, came. We did already joint publications in international highly ranked journals, SOSI and SLF together. But we uh, realized that this collaboration somehow uh, weakened during the past five years. We don't know exactly why. It might be because uh, staff is changing, responsibilities are changing. But from our perspective, it's a bit of pity that this long tradition of collaboration has weakened. And we are uh, very keen to, to refresh that and to, to renew this collaboration. Uh, but it's always uh, very important that uh, it's always over people. If people change, if people go, it's getting very difficult for collaboration. If you have people who stay at the position for a long time, then they can start to build very long-term collaboration, which is, in our opinion, very fruitful. Okay, the conclusions. Uh, we have very strong developments in modeling tools for snow avalanches, but also rock falls and debris flows at SLF. And we're very keen to share these models, to test these models in the Himalayas, to back calculate case studies uh, and, and to, to get on with these with this modeling. We have high resolution input data from uh, remote sensing. We use a lot of drones at the moment to do digital elevation models and avalanche mapping. We use a lot of satellites. And I know that SASE has means like that too, to generate very good digital elevation models. In, already in 2012, I had a, a one meter digital elevation model available to do the simulations with RAMs. Um, we are very keen to apply our models in mountain regions, and we do that around the world in different collaborations. We have collaborations with Afghanistan, but also New Zealand, Alaska, Central Asia, Uzbekistan, and Kyrgyzstan. So uh, we're really keen to test our model and to apply our model all over the world in mountain regions. So the big questions we have is, and this would be maybe a nice discussion, what is necessary to reanimate is a very fruitful collaboration between SASE and SLF in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, sir. Actually, uh, I would just like to uh, you know, add to whatever uh, Dr. Perry and Muller has said. Uh, 
and that i'm grateful that you uh, remembered us and uh, uh, you know you have uh, made it a point to uh, dr kular and narish kumar i just so wanted to reply to your question uh, this collaboration between sase and uh, uh, can you hear me yes we can hear you yeah can hear you. yeah yeah so uh, yeah. the kind of collaboration i have been in you know, last two and a half years we've been trying to you know restart that whole process and it is quite advanced stage so this will happen very uh, very soon uh, definitely there is a need to have a regular and continuous collaboration with you there is no problem and uh, shortly i think we should again start that and sase and dtrl uh, as you have been interacting with both the left both are getting merged now so it will become one entity uh, maybe uh, a short while from now so we will be able to you know have a regular interaction and use your ram model etc for our uh, flow simulation so in fact i was very keen to uh, visit slf and you know have interaction with you somehow it has not happened let's see thank you very much i have uh, dr snevani also sitting here and uh, yeah, yeah your old friends dr bula uh, yeah dr sudan so so you all know them in fact this is slf and sase has been one one single family and one single unit so we will continue the collaboration i will assure you. thank you thank you back to uh, thank you nice yeah. thank you thank you sir thank you sir uh, uh, thank you sir for your presentation on numerical avalanche modeling and uh, you have uh, highly rightly highlighted about the mount everest slide 2015 Lang Thang slide, ice avalanches, and the large scale in Manali. And uh, now moving ahead uh, with our next presentation and the final presentation. Now I would like to call upon Professor Surya Prakash, head GMR division, uh, and he is the in charge of three specialized center in NIT. He was associated with various prestigious institutions such as CBRI, IIT Roorkee, JNU, Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology, FRI, DIT, etc. He has also published several na national and international research publications, book, article, etc., in the highest impact factor journal uh, journals in uh, Spinger, Taylor Francis, etc. Over to you, sir. Okay, because uh, we have already excelled over time, so I will take uh, less of the time. I will uh, complete uh, actually my part of the presentation in terms of uh, response to disaster situations and how we try to manage the. Uh, risk from snows and uh, snow and avalanches my association with uh, avalanches actually started with the uh, because of actual collaboration between slf and sase when they had an international conference at manali i was part of the conference uh, and uh, that time uh, dr sarvadev was the director so it was very nice to listen to their proposals of the models for uh, avalanche modeling as well as for debris flows in india we have a multi hazard approach as part of disaster management and these are the situations in india we have in the himalayan parts and uh, himalaya is not only important uh, for us uh, from the disaster management or border issues but also a very sensitive ecosystem point of view because a uh, lot of our uh, fresh water bodies in the form of glaciers are lying over there and because of their altitude there is high uh, accelerated uh, origin uh, erosion in terms of sediment as well so this is actually uh, bringing new issues and also uh, almost 10% of our world's population lives in these mountains and 40% others depend on water from these sources now one of the issues highlighted by the previous speakers was the glacial receipt in the himalayan region and most of the glaciers in the himalaya they are receding uh, at variable rates and this receding of the glaciers is actually leading to formation of glacial lakes in the higher altitudes which is also an associated problem uh, with the uh, avalanche prone areas as well so there the glacial lake outwards floods have become uh, very threatening issues and we have already uh, dealt with it uh, through sdc and uh, in the stage of uh, formulation of national guidelines for globes um, likely to be uh, soon released in the next month september these are the kind of lakes which had actually formed in the high altitude areas and uh, which when they burst actually are bound with the and moraines and lake moraines 
and uh, they are uh, uh, mostly unconsolidated in nature and because of heavy precipitation and bad weather conditions they fail and cause heavy flash floods downstream sides the kedarnath tragedy was one of those example and these were the kind of scenarios that we seen after it is looked up just giving you a situation in the high altitude areas where precipitation weather and terrain all are adverse in nature in terms of their presence and they cause many types of different <coughs> <coughs> sorry different types of hazardous situations and affect our uh, pedestrians trekkers adventurists tourists pilgrims villagers vehicles hill area uh, no infrastructures buildings roads everything tourism and even forest and sports activities in the uh, these such areas now how do we try to manage dr sudanshu told you just briefly about active and passive measures that we have a uh, structural and non structural measures as well so i will not highlight it much because of uh, shortage of time but i would like to emphasize that when we are planning for risk management particularly in avalanche areas we have to look into three different zones one is where the formation happens for the avalanches and that area different types of structural measures are required from where the material get detached and depleted and then displaced now their displacement zone where through which it goes is called as a track it's a middle zone of that and has a different topography and snow cover into this we can actually reduce the amounts of materials going downwards which can affect the structures and the uh, lower zones that is the run out zone and deposition zone so each part of the uh, snow uh, avalanche we will have to have different control structures which will help prevent its impact not only in terms of volume velocity run out distance but also in terms of energy dissipation now different types of structures uh, have been done in india as well as in other countries i had to have an opportunity to go to the avalanche prone areas in japan and a similar structure i have seen there so i am showing some of examples when i visited sasse and their structures in terms of snow rigs to inhibit uh, the downfall impacts and also the nets uh, and the girders which being used at different steps so that uh, the impact of the snow can be reduced Uh, through uh, various mechanisms uh, using flexible structural snow rigs or meshes and nets and this is what i saw in japan that they had rows of similar uh, snow rigs at uh, in snow uh, prone areas where avalanches happened because i visited uh, just before the winter times so snow is no more there but uh, they were also putting similar uh, snow rigs and their lanes and uh, structures other issue that comes along with the the avalanches and deb uh, is the debris flows which happen and debris flows brings lot of sediments uh, in japan they had kept uh, these graded structures along with hindrances which actually stop the debris materials going coming down and uh, these debris material structures uh, they are in uh, consonance with the natural environment and uh, uh, allows only the water to come out which can be collected and disposed properly so in order uh, where we cannot actually prevent mitigate we have to monitor and respond so i'm just showing you some of the ways that they were doing in terms of cctv cameras using solar panels and also speaker systems and light systems to alert the public at large in living in those areas so they were keeping always a continuous watch on the weather conditions and the avalanche conditions from a remote center in an office which is away from the site location and using the remote sensing imagery as well as the uh, camera images together to issue alert and early warning sops my colleagues from sasse have already told the five step sops uh, given for this other things which i need to emphasize is to learn to respond to such situations if you can get if you get caught suddenly so we, uh, the response time is very very less compared to all other uh, major hazards in terms of snow most of the and avalanches uh, when person gets trapped it is the hypothermia which can 
actually kill people so less than 3 hours time is available for us to respond or uh, to survive ourselves and if you know how to survive if you get trapped you have to know whether you are upside down or downside up all those situations compared to other in other disasters there are more time like 3 days and 3 weeks we can save people safety plan we have to have so all those people who are living administration and even uh, for the army those safety plan should be in place uh, for all the uh, troops and also the officials uh, lookouts communication escape routes and safe zones should be well marked and the rescue safety rules should be known to all uh, and the search methods in terms of physical canine and technical search left in and general uh, hasnan sir actually told about canine search which is very effective technical search is still difficult although we are trying to now use radio devices to locate people buried under the avalanches and also to carry out physical research and using international uh, techniques in terms of search and rescue methods we have an international uh, search and rescue advisory group which gives uh, common connotations and symbols to locate people underneath uh, the debris like uh, avalanches and then extricate and those so just showing you some of the symbols because of shortage of time and learning about triage everybody should be aware about how to carry out triage and what are the different mechanisms in terms of uh, the conditions of the victims that we can show so shortage of time i am just running faster uh, because we have to take up some questions also so you have to look into these situations that whether person is uh, less injured more injured or dead so that you can provide adequate help to the right person at the right time without losing much of the time so this is the, the then abc uh, when victim is executed rescued then uh, looking into his conditions in terms of airways breathing and circulation so all this uh, simply must be given trainings at the local levels to the communities so that they can act as effective first responders the uh, local communities in the civil sector uh, actually are the first victims and also the first responders so i'm just showing you some of the things that can be taught uh, uh, in terms of training and practical exercises to the people living in those areas and also the people who are visiting those areas can be instructed and given these guidelines so say shortage of time i am escaping this cpr is one of the techniques that should be given and known so in case person is uh, not well uh, in the uh, disaster situations uh, you cannot do it alone uh, every sector whether it is scientific social administration or disaster management agency or line department have to come together then only we can succeed and go for a holistic approach that was uh, the main uh, objective of my presentation and make our society resilient like the stone move in any direction to quickly regain so with these words i'll close this presentation and uh, request uh, mr raju thappa to go for further questions and answers please thank you sir for your presentation uh, now we will take some questions raised by our participant we have received more than 50 questions from the participant but uh, due to time constraint we will just restrict ourselves to only one question per experts so um, first question is for director sase see nares kumar ji asked by avinav walia what type of community awareness activities sase or sdms conduct and what are their frequencies and success rate yeah uh, can you hear me yeah can you hear me yeah yes in fact uh, the uh, most of the program that we run for uh, creating awareness and training earlier was confined to mainly users like army and paramilitary forces last uh, few years we have extended this facility for the training awareness to the civilian sector and uh, himanchal sdma had approached us last year so we planned a series of uh, trainings for their qrts in the avalanche affected districts and we did one course in february the next course was planned in uh, end of march but because of this pandemic it couldn't happen but as a policy we are taking up the sdma's request and taking their uh, qrts for training at our manali center and we also you know take them to actual avalanche sites so this is basically wherever there is a requirement in the government sector in qrts the disaster management all the organizations 
and disaster management we are uh, actually open to and we are planning to provide them uh, the training on awareness safety and rescue while operating in snowbound areas so this is this function is going to actually increase in the coming years does it answer your question thank okay you, sir thank you for your okay. answer sir and uh, now moving on to our second question uh, that is uh, to uh, that is directed towards dr sudhansu question is asked by kesav from state disaster management authority the uh, question is what is the process of getting forecasting information from sase being in the sikkim state disaster management authority the question is how the forecasting information from sase Yeah. How to get yeah. information? Uh, actually, uh, actually uh, during winter and uh, related to avalanche forecast, we issue the forecast to NDMA New Delhi, and uh, through NDMA it goes to different SDMA and up to the local level. So, in case uh, somebody wants forecast directly from us, they have to write it. and we can also and they can provide their official email id then we can add it here and we can directly send it to you the question is that we, uh, whether uh, we will be covering that area or not that we have really to see and uh, we will have to work upon that if the area is not covered till yet by sase then we will definitely try to cover that area and for that we will require the local data because as you know without data we would not be able to give forecast for that area so it's a two way that we will need the help of the local authority we will collect data from them and we will try to give the forecast either through ndma sdma or uh, whatever that will be decided uh, can i answer uh, i i mean is it sufficient yes sir yes thank you sir for your response uh, now the third question is for dr perry and dr eve question is uh, how dem data along with other remote sensing data of a particular area helps to acquire accuracy prediction and upcoming avalanches upcoming avalanches for you yeah <laughs> so what we do often now is uh, mapping snow depth and snow depth distributions before and after a storm with drones and with drones we get accuracies of better than 10 cm and spatial resolutions of 5 to 10 cm so very very accurate snow depth distribution maps uh, but with drones we can only do it for limited areas we can cover something like 4 square kilometers but we already now are able to cover entire avalanche tracks and and uh, avalanche tracks with elevation differences of more than 1000 meters and this helps a lot to understand how the snow is deposited by wind and how an avalanche release zone can develop but we don't yet have a good model for that that's what we want to go for we want to go for a good snow distribution model we can include into the ram simulation model to inform on where does the avalanche release with how much snow how much volume and where does the avalanche in train snow and how much snow does it in train but remote sensing is really the key because it's the only way you can map it accurately enough otherwise you can only use measurements by hand and this is always a point measurements what we need is spatial continuous measurements and remote sensing is the only tool that can provide that information Uh, yes, and I'd like to add that uh, the models are no longer uh, they they require the temperature of the snow. So the temperature at a specific elevation, and how this temperature of the snow cover is at lower elevations makes an ex, uh, an important difference in how far the avalanche runs out. So this accurate information of temperature is also very very important to make accurate. Uh, Uh, accurate predictions of where the avalanche is going to go and for example if it is going to indeed develop a powder cloud and a powder air blast or if it will maybe transform into a wet snow avalanche i i'm very very well aware that in india 
you have all types of avalanches. You have particular difficulties with wet snow avalanches. And to be able to predict uh, the movement of wet snow avalanches, then you need to know uh, the amount of water in the snow cover and you need to know where this water is distributed. So these are all things that we are now working on as we have uh, we continuously improve our models. Thank you, sir, for your response. Now the last question is uh, is for Dr. Surya Prakash. Uh, actually, it's a it's a it's a combination of two or three participants. Uh, so the question is, what are the upcoming initiatives in uh, rescue and uh, re uh, rescue and other operations? To reduce the disaster, and how can NIDM play an important role in uh, in promoting such uh, information? Uh, thank you, Raju. I think, uh, Raju, I think uh, this discussion pertains to our preparedness against disaster situations. So, uh, as many of our delegates participants must be knowing that we have a, now a dedicated response force, National Disaster Response Force, at the national level. And at the states, we have state disaster response force. And also besides these disaster response forces, we do have civil defense, home guards, fire personnel, also uh, doing the rescue operations. Uh, this was my emphasis in the presentation that because this is very hazard specific rescue operation, which requires a different kind of skills, trainings and resources than any other disaster in the lower parts of our uh, geographical areas. So uh, we need more such trainings and maybe the expert organizations like SASE, they can, uh, they have actually some guidelines and uh, some, uh, uh, you know, awareness materials developed on search and rescue also, uh, which can be shared with the common people also. Now currently the DRDO and uh, SASE, they are planning to uh, share their knowledge, experience and expertise will the civil uh, organizations and sector as well. So most likely this will soon happen. Uh, and uh, most of the people who are from the army side, military side, they do have some experiences and they train and they have their SOPs as been found by our chief guest, Lieutenant General Hassan Ansar. So this is in brief about the question. Yeah, as uh, uh, as regards uh, the you know, concluding remarks, as I was just mentioning in my uh, discussion, the, uh, creating awareness about the uh, safety and the rescue and you know uh, various mitigation techniques which are available is very important. And then uh, the way we uh, disseminate the information to user, large number of users in army as well as in civil sector, it will. Uh, help in mitigating this disaster. Today, technology-wise, uh, we are quite confident that we have adequate uh, knowledge, adequate competence in dealing with this problem uh, and bringing, uh, because it's a natural hazard, so you can never guarantee 100% safety, but uh, the casualties and loss to life and property can definitely be brought down by adopting, you know, uh, creating awareness and adopting the right strategies and tools and techniques for uh, mitigating this hazard can be brought down to nearly zero. So I hope uh, people uh, they, uh, through the this kind of initiatives from uh, NDMA and NDI, NIDM, uh, we create more and more awareness. And on SASE's part, as I already said, uh, we will be, uh, we are undertaking to take more courses for SDMAs and QRTs from various states who are directly dealing with. So we all together will be able to, you know, reduce the risk and uh, hazard potential of these avalanches and uh, have a much better uh, scenario. Uh, thank you very much. Now I would like to request Ms. Koren Dimanj, if she can uh, speak some few words. We could not have you earlier, ma'am. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. You are audible, ma'am. Yes, I'm so yes, sorry. I'm I was so listening sorry. to this very, very interesting uh, presentations. And I'm, I can just say, as a Swiss uh, citizen and uh, as an official of the government, Switzerland, I'm so proud of this seminar. I'm so proud of the collaboration we had. And I'm thankful to the Swiss experts, but also the Indian experts. Um, I think this has been a wonderful seminar. I've just seen around 800 people being um, connected. Maybe that's why I could not connect. 
but even after the time of two hours, there were still 700 people. So it shows really how important this topic is in India. Um, and I think we'll, we will continue the collaboration. Thank you to all and congratulations to the organizers. Thank you, ma'am. And we would also like to inform you that apart from this, we also have participants who are joining us through YouTube live streaming. We have also participants there also who could not make us through Cisco over there. Now move, moving ahead, uh, now I'll request Mr. Anil Kathet, who is currently working as the young professional in Center for Hill Area Development, GMR Division, to propose the vote of names. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Raju. Good afternoon to all the dignitaries experts and participants it's not yet are not much discussed as compared to other disasters such as floods cyclones earthquakes landslides and so on due to their remotely occurrence but in recent years many precious lives were engulfed by them including our army personnel further current elements of climate warming climate change are anticipated to adversely impact Caspier in higher mountain range, increasing the frequency and magnitude of snow avalanche, thus augmenting the vulnerability of humans, socio economic development, besides changing the topography. So, we need to prepare for any forthcoming disastrous event by developing a culture of safety and resilience. Developing the culture of safety and resilience will not happen overnight. It will take time and of collective efforts from each and every stakeholder to cultivate it. An idea has always been on its toe in this regard through its webinars, training programs, self study programs, online thematic courses, and publications. It has been our pleasure to host the international webinar on snow avalanche risk management. And I thank SASE and SDC for their collaboration in organizing the webinar on such an important topic. I would like to propose hearty vote of thanks to our chief guest, Lieutenant General Sayyad Atta Hassan, member NDMA for accepting our invitation and gracing the webinar with his presence and sharing valuable on-field expertise experiences on snow avalanche. I would also like to thank dignitaries Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, Executive Director and IDM, uh, Mr. Naresh Kumar, Director Sase, and Ms. Corin, Head SDC, Ms. Divya Kashyap, uh, SDC, for enlightening us with their respective thoughts, views to reduce, mitigate the risk of snow avalanche. I also take this opportunity to thank our distinguished experts, Dr. Perry and Dr. Eve from SDC, Dr. Shudhansu, Scientist as uh, Sase and Professor Surya Prakash, head GMR division and IDM, for making the web significant through their presentation, wisdom, experiences on various spectrums of snow avalanche risk management. I express a deep sense of gratitude to all our participants for their active participation in the webinar. I would also like to thank my GMRD colleagues, Mr. Raju Thapa, for moderating, Dr. Hajit Kaur for facilitating for facilitating an NIDM IT cell and all others who directly indirectly have in organizing this international webinar. With these words, I conclude my vote of thanks. Thank you.